Eastern Afghanistan is situated in one of the most geologically dangerous regions on the planet. This mountainous area, with its ancient trade routes that connected Central Asia to the Indian subcontinent, has witnessed throughout the centuries not only human conflicts, but also the devastating forces of nature. The provinces of Kunar and Nangarhar, historically known for their rugged landscapes and deep valleys, have always coexisted with seismic threats due to their location in the collision zone between the Indian and Eurasian tectonic plates. On August 31st, 2025, the Earth shook with a violence that few could imagine. A magnitude 6.0 earthquake struck Kunar province, but this would not be just another isolated tragedy. What followed was a sequence of seismic events that would transform this date into the beginning of one of the worst natural disasters ever recorded in the region. The shallow nature of this first tremor, occurring between 5 and 6 miles, 8 to 10 kilometers deep, dramatically amplified its destructive effects on the surface. 90% of all structures in some districts simply vanished. Adobe brick houses, built with traditional techniques passed down through generations, could not withstand the brutal force of the tremor. Entire families who were sleeping peacefully were buried in a matter of seconds without any chance of escape. The silence that followed the Earth's roar was broken only by the desperate screams of survivors searching for their loved ones among the rubble. But the tragedy was just beginning. In the following days, at least seven aftershocks hit the region, including one of magnitude 5.6 that brought down structures that had survived the first impact. And then, as if nature wanted to show its supreme force, a second even more powerful earthquake magnitude 6.2 shook southeastern Afghanistan. The combination of these events created a scenario of destruction that defies any description. What you are about to discover in this account goes beyond the cold numbers of statistics. We will dive into the science behind this devastating sequence of earthquakes, understand why this specific region is so vulnerable, and reveal how phenomena like soil liquefaction transformed entire villages into death traps. More than 2,000 lives were lost, but the complete story of this catastrophe reveals aspects that may change our understanding of seismic risks worldwide. The Geological Foundation of Destruction the destructive force that struck eastern Afghanistan was not the result of geological chance. For tens of millions of years, the Indian tectonic plate has been moving relentlessly northward, colliding with the Eurasian plate at a speed of one and a half to two inches, four to five centimeters per year, approximately three inches, eight centimeters, annually. This continental collision not only raised the majestic Himalayan mountains, but also created a complex network of geological faults that crosses all of Central Asia, transforming the region into a seismic time bomb. The eastern provinces of Afghanistan are literally cut through by systems of strike-slip faults and hidden fractures, and where stress constantly accumulates until the rocks can no longer withstand the pressure. When this energy is suddenly released, the result is earthquakes like those we witnessed. Unlike subduction zones along the Pacific Ring of Fire, where one plate dives under another, here we have a different problem. Two gigantic continental masses pushing against each other, creating a complex pattern of compressive and shear faults. But there is an even more sinister factor that amplifies the destruction. Soil liquefaction. The valleys of eastern Afghanistan are built upon alluvial deposits. Sand, silt, and gravel transported by rivers from the surrounding mountains. When water-saturated sediments are subjected to intense tremors, the pressure of groundwater increases until the soil temporarily loses its resistance and behaves like a liquid. Witnesses described seeing the ground undulate beneath their feet, while entire houses tilted or sank because their foundations completely lost stability. This phenomenon did not just destroy structures, but the entire infrastructure of the region. Roads split open, fields transformed into quicksand and retaining walls collapsed, Liquefaction dramatically complicated rescue operations, making it nearly impossible for heavy equipment to reach certain areas. It is a problem we also face in places like the Los Angeles Basin, Vancouver, Richmond, and Delta in British Columbia. Areas built on similar sediments that can liquefy during intense earthquakes. Now imagine the desperate situation. More than 84,000 people directly affected, 8,000 houses completely destroyed, and entire communities like Vadia, Maza, and Dara completely isolated not only by destruction, but also by landslides and collapsed buildings that blocked the roads. But there is something even more disturbing about this earthquake sequence that scientists are trying to understand, and which may indicate that the worst is yet to come. The seismic pattern. 
A chain reaction of destruction. The seismic pattern that emerged in eastern Afghanistan in 2025 represents something much more complex than a typical sequence of main shock followed by aftershocks. Seismologists identified a phenomenon known as seismic clustering, multiple significant events occurring in rapid succession, magnitude 6.0, 5.6, 6.2. This type of clustering suggests that stress is transferring along interconnected fault systems, where each rupture alters the distribution of pressure in the Earth's crust and can trigger new tremors. Scientists monitoring the region warn that more seismic shocks may occur, potentially strong ones, in the coming weeks. Each earthquake in the sequence changed the local stress field, loading nearby faults that may be dangerously close to their rupture limits. It is like a geological domino effect, where each event increases the probability of new disasters. This cruel scientific reality means that rescue teams and survivors face a continuous threat while fighting to save lives and rebuild. Liquefaction is not the only secondary hazard that accompanies these earthquakes. Afghanistan's steep terrain makes the region extremely vulnerable to landslides, especially during monsoon season. Entire slopes gave way after the tremors, destroying roads, burying villages, and further isolating affected areas. In several locations, these landslides dammed rivers, creating the risk of flash floods should these natural barriers collapse, an additional threat that could trigger the next catastrophe. Regional hospitals like the one in Jalalabad were completely overwhelmed with more than 600 traumatized patients in just a few days. Doctors Without Borders quickly sent emergency kits, but supplies were exhausted almost instantly. Eight aid convoys faced blocked mountain passages, while helicopter missions were suspended due to storms. Nature seemed to conspire against any relief effort, adding an extra layer of cruelty to an already desperate situation. But the most haunting aspect of this tragedy is its timing. The country was already facing a humanitarian crisis with limited food reserves, reduced foreign aid, and fragile health systems. Now, with nearly 100,000 people homeless, and this number growing daily, vital agricultural lands buried under debris or sand, the threat of famine grows exponentially. What happened in eastern Afghanistan is not just a natural catastrophe, it is a revelation about our collective vulnerability to the geological forces that shape our planet 